Hey everyone, I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And it's cold here in Boston today, which is why I'm all bundled up. But we have a fun video for you, and hopefully a helpful video for you, about blog writing style. So let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so this subject came up because I had a colleague who is the director of content marketing for a company that I do work for. He asked me this question and I'm going to read it and I'm trying to be very careful about moving my head because sometimes my lips don't line up with what I'm saying on the smartphone video, so bear with me. All right, he wrote and he started with a compliment, which is really smart. He said, because you're such a great writer technically and also are very knowledgeable in SEO, I'm interested in your thoughts on how important the following are to the blogs we write for our clients. Style, point of view, and credibility of sources. It's a great question. So that's what we're going to talk about specifically. We're going to talk about blog writing style, point of view, and credibility. So let's get to it with the first point. Okay, so blog writing style. Now he was asking about style writing guides. I'm gonna cover both points because they're both relevant. If you are a freelance copywriter, I guarantee you're going to be doing a lot of blog writing. That's something that I do, that's the bulk of my work. And the reason why is because it's extremely effective. It's one of the hallmarks and foundational pieces of content marketing because when businesses blog irregularly and they write compelling, keyword rich content, it helps bring in that all important traffic to the top of the funnel and then your other content helps to work people through the sales funnel until they become a customer or whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. So style, he was asking about style guides and when I say style guide, I'm talking about AP Associated Press, Chicago Manual of Style, there's also APA, I'm sure there's some other ones that I'm forgetting about. And these style guides are kind of like the Bible that guide writers when they're writing usually for a particular publication like the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or Time Magazine or Newsweek. So it's very much a journalistic thing. That doesn't mean it won't apply to copywriting, but usually you deal with those style guides for journalism purposes. Now, if you're working for a big brand, you can ask them if they follow a particular style guide. And some might say AP, some might say Chicago. You know what? I don't worry too much about the nitty gritty because your style guide is getting into every aspect of writing from capitalization to punctuation to language that might be outdated to how to, how to hyphenate certain things. And the thing is, there are different style guides because they don't even agree. So I always tell young writers when they're getting started, young copywriters, that your goal is to write error-free, <laughs> compelling, factually based copy that's keyword rich and that's written for websites, meaning it's easy to follow, it's skimmable, you have clear headlines, clear subheadlines, bullet points. You know, when people read online, they're skimming. So it's short paragraphs, short sentences. That's what you're trying to do when you're writing copy for a website or for a blog post. You want it to be accurate, you want it to be compelling, but I wouldn't get so worried about the ins and outs of whether you should use the Oxford comma, unless of course the client is telling you to worry about such things. Now, if you wanna look like a rock star with your client, especially if you're starting a new relationship, you can ask them if they have an in-house style guide because a lot of companies will create an informal in-house style guide that talks about how you should talk about their brand. There might be certain phrases that they consider verboten that you should stay away from, or maybe there's a certain way that you use their brand name in sentences. Like this is especially true if there's like funky capitalization, like how do you use it at the beginning of a sentence or the end of a sentence, things like that. And you'll look like you're really on top of the g your game if you ask the company or the client if they have an in-house style guide. And if they don't have one, you could suggest creating one and billing for it. Hmm. But you don't necessarily need one in order to do good writing. More often than not, you're probably gonna be dealing with companies that don't have one, especially if you're working with lots of small businesses, and that's okay. Again, your goal is to write compelling, factually-based copy, 
keyword rich that follows the tenets of great formatting for websites and blog posts. So there you have it. And that's what I told my, my colleague um, about the style guy. Now, blog writing style, writing style, little bit of a different thing. So that has to do with the tone and does it sound like the brand? You wanna make sure that your writing reflects the brand. That doesn't sound like a complete you know, disconnect if someone is reading their website and then they go to this blog post that you wrote and it sounds like something completely different. So how do you get the writing style down? Well, you study what the client has put out in other content. Ask the client, be like, you know, what are your three favorite blog posts that you have that really reflect who you are and the type of writing you want me to do? Study them. What is it about the writing that, you know, you need to know? Because you're going to want to mimic that style and tone. So that's how you get into the head of your client. The other thing you should do, you want to get a sense of who your client's target audience is. You'll hear the term buyer persona a lot in copywriting land, and that is really trying to understand who your client's ideal buyer is. So they might actually have a document called a buyer persona that you can study, and you can then get a sense of, okay, what type of writing is gonna resonate with this target audience? Because the way you write for your 90-year-old grandmother is gonna be very different than the way you would write for your 15-year-old niece, for example. Like, the content and the substance might be the same, but how you convey it and how you say it might be a little bit different, and it should be. So that's how you get a sense of the writing style. So, okay, we covered style guides and writing style. Let's go on to the second point, which was what, Stewie? Stewie looks very serious. Point of view. Okay, so quick English lesson. Point of view, you have first person, I, we, our. You have second person, which is you, Y-O-U, and then you have third person, which is he, she, they. So I would say 95% of the time, the content that you produce in blog posts, in emails, in advertisements, in white papers, in social media, you are going to be using second person, you, Y-O-U. And why do you use Y-O-U? Because extremely powerful. It's all about you, meaning it's all about the buyer. So, or the pros prospect or the lead or whoever it is you're talking about. It's very personal and it's to them and it makes for much more compelling copy. So if I were to write a blog post instructing you how to write a great blog post, I would say you wanna make sure you have an enticing headline and keyword rich copy. Make sure you use bulleted lists and you end with a very strong call to action. Notice how I'm using the word you, you, you. So it's very personal, it resonates. Now, there will be some times when first person might be appropriate, a first person anecdote, or a column that's in first person just because maybe you're ghostwriting it from the point of view of the person you're interviewing it, interviewing and you're doing first person. I had a client who was talking about Ha the challenges she had with getting her mother in an assisted living facility and had it was relevant to the blog post we were writing. So the first part of the blog post was written in first person from her point of view as she's talking about this story and this narrative and then we shifted into the point of the blog post and shifted into second person. So that will sometimes happen. But by and large, for most of the content you write, you are going to be writing in second person. You. Y-O-U. Okay, so the third point my colleague asked about was credibility of sources. And in parentheses, here's what he wrote. He said, government sources, educational institutions, not-for-profits, and respectable publications. And he had the word respectable in quotation marks, which is fair because we live in a very heightened political climate, to put it mildly, and there's lots of debate as to what's considered respectable or having a good reputation. So I'm going to tell you what I told him. I'm gonna put a link in the bottom of this video or in the description area that is going to link to a media bias chart. And this is what I sent him. And you're gonna to wanna to check it out. And you might have seen this floating around on social media because it's, it's, it's been shared a lot. But what this chart does is it doesn't take a position. It just is very, very fact-based and it kind of shows on a chart what's considered like neutral, meaning it's fact-based reporting with no agenda, no spin. It's just neutral. Like it's just putting the facts out there 
it's not leaning left it's not leaning right it's just neutral and then it kind of goes down like this it's a pyramid where you get into stuff that's a little more skewed left and a little more skewed right to the very bottom where it's like extreme left extreme right and people are making stuff up on either side and again i'm not trying to get into a political debate it just shows you the type of publications that would be good to use as sources for your blog posts or any type of content writing and the ones that you want to stay away from because that's the whole point. Unless you're trying to write something, you know, unless you're working, you probably aren't. If you're working for a business, you want to keep things neutral. You don't want to have political leanings inside more often than not. I mean, there might be exceptions, but for what you're going to, going to be doing, you don't want to do that because it will distract. It'll distract from what you're trying to say because the person reading it might get caught up in, you know, the political leanings or the undercurrents or the subtext. So using neutral sources like an Associated Press or a Reuters, those are both considered neutral, fact-based, you know, no one's gonna have any complaints about that. I'm sure someone somewhere probably would complain, but you're, you're safe using that. You're usually safe using um, academic journals or scientific journals. The other thing you want to think about with sources, um, you want recent information, especially when you are sharing statistics. Try to get it within the last year if you can, last two years. Always look for primary sources. I, I had this happen just the other day where I found this really great statistic that all these articles were citing. And I wasn't necessarily doubting the, stati the statistic, but I couldn't find the primary source. I couldn't find you know, where they were getting it from. They're all kind of linking back and forth to each other to the statistic. So I eventually had to let it go because I'm like, well, I'm not going to just, I can't find the primary source. I don't necessarily doubt it, but I had to find something else. So I'm a big believer in using primary sources because yeah, you're writing a blog post for a business, but you still, you, you still want it to be, <laughs> you want it to be fact-based. You want it to be accurate because you can really lose the trust quickly with the people you're talking to if you're putting out shoddy statistics or shoddy work. So keep that in mind. I will link to the um, media bias chart below and I'm going to do a longer blog post on this and I'll link to that as well in the description so that if you want to read through everything I discussed here you can and maybe that'll help you get it better. I know that works for me. So there you have it. We talked about blog writing style, we talked about point of view, and we talked about credibility of sources. And that hopefully will help you with your blog writing and all sorts of other content writing. And I hope you found this video helpful overall. I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is what I'm here for. If you have a question, go ahead and ask in the comment or reach out via email or social media. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That makes Stewie and me very happy. If you don't like it, just move along. And we will see you next time. Bye.